Today we're going to talk about Florida black bears. I'm Alicia and Dave Telesco is one of our staff experts. He's here to share all things bear. Dave? Thanks Alicia. So first thing I want to do is, is talking about bears. I want to talk about what bears look like and we have some big bears in Florida. As a matter of fact so big we have a 620 pounder here. I want to show you a video of. He actually ran over our cameras. So uh, while we saw that really big male, most bears in Florida are actually a lot smaller. So I got a pelt here from a bear that was hit by a car and we were able to recover the pelt. Um, this is 200 pounds. So take a look. This is about as tall as I am. Um, and fortunately for me, I'm a little bit lighter than it, but this is a 200 pound bear. But if you look at it, standing on all fours or what it might look like, you could mistake it for a dog. It's not that big. Um, and a lot of people do mistake these bears, um, especially an adult female for a dog, because an adult female is anywhere from 150 to 200 pounds. Now, our males, they're usually double that. So 400 pounds, no one's confusing that one for a dog. So if you wanna know if a bear's been around outside, take a look on the ground and you might be able to see paw prints. And so with me, I have an adult front foot and a juvenile bear's back foot. And so the first thing you might notice is they've actually got five toes. Um, and just like people, our hands look different than our feet. So the hands of a bear, you have five toes and then the foot of a bear or the hind print, five toes, but they actually walk on their heel. They walk flat footed, just like we do. And um, that's why bears are able to stand on their hind feet and balance. Most animals like dogs or cats, they're built for running. So they have a dew claw up here. That's actually their thumb. So they've evolved to run. They're much better runners than we are, much better runners than bears are. Hey Dave, can you bring those forward? I want to get a little closer look. And I also want to know how much did these bears weigh? Do you know? Yeah, so this is a young bear. It's about a year old. So 70 pounds, 75. And this one's 250 pounds. So that'd be an adult female, a pretty good sized adult female or an adult male. So what do Florida black bears eat? Well. First thing we do as biologists is look at their teeth. And if you see this big canine here, normally that means you're talking about a meat eater. But in the case of Florida black bears, they're actually almost herbivores. 80% of their diet are plants. So that's anything that grows a berry or a nut, like we're standing underneath live oaks and some wild grapes. Um, those are absolutely the most important part of their diet. And you can also see inside their mouth, those molars look like our molars, wide and flat. That means they're doing a lot of grinding, not much cutting of meat. Another 15% of their diet are bugs, um, yellow jackets, termites, colonial insects, and beetles. And because 95% of their diet are either plants or bugs, we can actually see what they've been eating by looking at their scat. Scat, well, that's biologist's fancy way of saying poop. So this is an actual real bear scat. Um, preserved it by putting plastic over it. It's about 10 years old. But you can see all of those little seeds, they're the same kind of fruit. That's the seed of a gallberry, which is about the size of a blueberry. Um, and you can see just how many gallberries this bear must have eaten in order to produce this scat. And if you look really close, you can actually make out that there, you can actually make out there's actually an exoskeleton of a beetle in here, that black square. Um, so because the exoskeleton is off of insects and seeds and other debris left behind in plants, we can actually see what a bear is eating without ever actually seeing the bear itself. Do all scats look like that? Actually, bear scats are going to look pretty different depending on what they eat. We've got a shot here of five different scats and depending on what they're eating, it looks pretty different. But anything this size or bigger, it's going to be a black bear. A lot smaller than this, probably raccoon, because they eat a lot of the same things. Now, bears eat plants and insects, but they also eat some meat. And so 5% of their diet is animal. And that could be opossums, armadillos. They'll also eat chickens, um, anything that's really easy for them to catch and eat. We like to use the word attractants. Um, and basically what that means is anything that's going to bring a bear in. So something that attracts the bear to the neighborhood. Um, in the case of bears, they really don't like people, but they love what we leave behind. 
And if you think about that, when we put stuff in the garbage, it's garbage, that's not food anymore. But those pizza crusts or the old fruit in the back of the fridge, or maybe the stale potato chips, that's a calorie gold mine for bears. Because to knock over a few garbage cans in a half hour, it would probably take them, I don't know, half a day just to see how many acorns they can eat. And it's all about time. And it's all about how much effort bears are gonna take to get all those calories that they need. So if it's really easy to get a lot of calories from garbage cans, it sort of makes sense why over the 6,000 calls we get every year, a full third of them are specifically reporting bears getting the garbage. And that's because garbage has a pretty good scent and bears can smell things over a mile away. So when they bring into the neighborhood because of the garbage, uh, there's a lot of things we can do. There's actually a lot of options to secure the garbage. Um, the first option is free. Keep the garbage secure in either your garage or a sturdy shed until the morning of pickup. And that way, the bear does not have all night to be thinking about whether they're brave enough to break into the garbage just that morning before pickup. Another option is to actually put metal gate halves on the regular trash can that you have. And we actually have a video that shows you how to do that. So here's an example of a bear resistant trash can that's been commercially made and designed specifically to keep bears out. Now, uh, in order to sell it as a bear resistant trash can, they actually have to test it at a facility that has captive grizzly bears that are experts at breaking into things. And I talk about grizzly bears, those are brown bears. Those are very different than our black bears here in Florida. They can be much larger and definitely a lot more aggressive. So looking at this can, um, it's got a lot of features that are similar to the other cans. Uh, we have another trash can demo that goes through three other types. Uh, but what you're gonna see is reinforcements all the way around. Um, also, there's really no place for a bear to get his tooth or a claw in to be able to use their strength to crank this open. Um, the other feature that's gonna be similar to all these is they have specific latches that when you push on them, we can open them, but a bear can't. Um, and then we, we call this automatically locking because when we drop it, it locks. I don't, there's no extra step for me to get this to lock in place. And so that's how we have a commercially bears and trash can. Did we ever try it out on Florida black bears? Like give them a garbage can and have them try to break in? Yeah, actually we did. Uh, we went across the state a couple of years ago, uh, six different zoos and all the bears had their chance to get into some of these cans. And it's funny, some of them were real interested and tried. Other ones were sort of puzzled as far as what they were supposed to do. But in general, we feel pretty good about these cans and they keep bears out. What kind of stuff did you put in the garbage cans? We put peanut butter, grape jelly, fish, dog food, anything that was really specifically interesting to those bears. Um, and typically what they would do is smell it and then they would try to get into it. Now there's other items besides garbage that'll bring a bear into the neighborhood. Uh, they really like the seeds off of a bird feeder. And so things you can do there is you can pull it in at night, um, only powder enough seed that the birds are gonna eat all, all of it up for that one day, or you can hang it 10 feet high, four feet from any attachment point. The other thing they'll eat is dog or cat food. And the thing with that is if you're gonna feed your pets outside, feed them and bring that in. And also bring the bowl in because that scent still carries even there's no food in it. Um, and then of course that greasy stuff that's left on our grill, definitely want to clean the grills after use. If you can put them in a shed or a garage, that's a good idea too. And finally, fruit or nut trees. Um, and that's usually seasonal. So if you have some, some uh, nuts dropping, maybe you can rake those up. Or even if you wanted to, you could put electric fencing if you have say blueberry bushes uh, that are producing a lot of fruit. We've talked about attractants where you attract bears to your property, which you definitely don't want. What about when you leave your property and go take your pet for a walk? Yeah, you know, when you're taking your pet for a walk, and this goes for any kind of pet, we've had pot belly pigs, we've had dogs, some people walk their cats, um, but basically when you're walking with your pet, you wanna make sure that pets are relatively close to you. So retractable leashes are not really a good thing, especially if there's brush, so that your dog can kind of venture in where maybe wildlife are already at. You don't want to surprise them. So it'd be good to actually talk a little bit, talk to your pet while you're walking them. That way you don't surprise any animals as you're coming down the road. Um, the other thing is, is that when you see a wildlife, say it's a bear, um, what you want to do is stop. You don't want to approach it. You don't want to try to get your, your pet to chase it off. Um, that's not going to work out well. And bears can get really defensive when there's a, a dog involved. 
um, especially if it's a female with cubs. So if you see a bear, you stop and you, you back up and you go ahead and go somewhere else. Now, if you are walking your pet in an area that has a lot of bears or you've seen bears, what we recommend is that you carry bear spray. Okay, bear spray is specific for black bears. Okay, um, it looks like a little bit of a fire extinguisher. Um, and that's a good thing because what it reminds us is this is not pepper spray that you use for personal defense. This actually comes out in a cloud 20 to 30 feet away. Um, and so what it does, it creates a chemical barrier between you and the bear that it would have to walk through. So this is something that we highly recommend if you spend a lot of time outdoors, walking your pets in the woods, this is really effective to keep you, your pets, and the bear safe. You might be asking, why am I seeing so many bears now, this time of year? Um, that's because bears are really active in the fall. What they're trying to do is store up enough calories that they can make it through the winter. And now you're thinking, these are Florida black bears. We live in Florida, we barely have a winter. Um, actually, regardless of the winter and how cold it is, there's other triggers that make a bear want to go to sleep in the winter time. Less food, less light, and then our adult females, if they're pregnant, they actually give birth in winter. So they have to stay put for a few months. And bears have this ability, that they can sleep, they don't have to eat, drink, or go to the bathroom for a few months. So some of our bears do that, um, but basically in order to be able to do that, they have to eat 20,000 calories a day. Yes, 20,000. So what we're supposed to eat in 10 days, a bear eats in one day. That takes about 18 hours a day of foraging for the bear to do that. And again, what we're thinking about here is how much calorie can I get for as little effort as possible? That's why this time of year they're most active in neighborhoods because we have so many calories out there for them to get into. Our unsecured garbage cans, the pet food, the bird seed, any of that is gonna be attracting bears because they can get a lot of calories for a very little amount of effort. And that's important to remember and that's why it's even more important this time of year to keep those items secure from bears. What about in the spring, Dave? Is it kind of the same thing or? So in the spring, bears are getting up from their winter's nap. Um, they've been a little less active and so now they're looking for food. They have to replenish all that fat that they lived off of for a few months. And so spring is also the time when there's not that much food out in the woods. So bears are really gonna be looking for some easy food sources. So we wanna make sure that our garbage is secure, no pet food or dog foods out overnight. Uh, keep that bird seed secure because we don't wanna invite them when they're real hungry in spring to come to the neighborhood to eat. So what are you supposed to do if you see a bear? Well, first thing, it matters where you are, where the bear is, and what is the bear doing. Now, you can see in the background here, we have a, a bear silhouette, and if the bear is that close to me and I have my back to it, that's not a good thing. We don't wanna turn our backs on a bear, especially not that close. Uh, but basically, if you see a bear and you're in the woods, that's the woods for the bear. And so what you wanna do is you notice it from far away, that's great, and you back off, you may take a different trail. You don't wanna approach it, do not feed it, and please no selfies. That is a recipe for disaster. Um, if it's in your yard, that's a whole different ball game. If it's in your yard, you wanna let the bear know, this is my space and you're not welcome here. So what you wanna do is get in a secure area, either get in your car or maybe on your porch, and go ahead, honk that horn or yell and clap. Tell that bear to get out of there because this is something that you wanna let them know you've now entered my space and you're not welcome. So if a bear is approaching you and is still relatively far away, put your arms up. Go ahead, say, no bear, get out of here. You wanna make sure that that bear knows you're not an easy target and that you're gonna be aggressive. Uh, if there's sticks or rocks, throw, go ahead and throw it at them. Let them know that this is not a welcome area for them to be in. So if you spend a lot of time outdoors in bear country, you're gonna to wanna to carry bear spray. Bear spray is an extremely effective deterrent of a bear stopping them from getting too close to you. Um, this is very different than our personal mace or protective spray where it comes out in a stream. This actually comes out 30 to 20 to 30 feet in a cloud. So the bear actually has to walk through a two foot section of cloud of chemicals to get to you. And if it does, it's gonna be incapacitated for about 45 minutes. Nose dripping, eyes, back of the throat burning. It's not something that the bear wants to encounter again. Very effective. And so um, typically they come out in a nine ounce spray 
And what you wanna keep in mind is nine ounces, probably about nine seconds of spray. But what you don't wanna do is spray all nine seconds at the first go. You don't know if that's gonna reach the bear, you don't know if the wind's gonna push it away. So you wanna do a two second burst, three second burst, and then see where, how it works and do it again. And so, but again, keep in mind, this is for if a bear's approaching you and you cannot scare it off. So I'm gonna show you what that looks like and how to use it. All right, so first things first, it has a safety. You take the safety off and here's your spray. So here's the bear. Get out of here, bear! All right, that doesn't seem to work. So you aim low and a three second burst. And you can see that cloud basically covers the bear. Um, that bear would have to come through that cloud to get to me. But if, it, if I don't feel like it was comfortable, I want to spray again, go ahead and spray low. And you see how that cloud rises up. So if you spray low, that's another three seconds. And then, and there it goes. So an important thing to remember for bear spray is that it actually comes out 70 miles per hour. So even if a little bit drifts back, most of that spray is gonna go out. Now, if it's a really windy day, yes, you probably wanna get upwind and make sure you're aware. But the effects of uh, bear spray is the same thing as you know personal protection spray. You're gonna rinse your eyes, uh, rinse your mouth, um, but a full blast of this will incapacitate a bear or anything else for about 45 minutes. We get over 6,000 calls a year typically about bears. And it's important because we want to know what's going on and how to help. Unfortunately, we know thousands of other people are experiencing conflicts, but don't know to call us. And if you call us early in the process, we have a lot of options to help reduce the conflict and reduce the safety threat. Um, but the issue is that you have to let us know. We don't know what's happening unless you call us. Uh, we're not able to monitor next door or other social media um, to figure out what everyone's talking to the community about. So if you call us, let us know and then you can be the bear ambassador for that group you can let them know hey i talked to fwc they said we can do this about it um, and that's really important because working together we can reduce these conflicts if you need more information about florida black bears find us online all you have to do is go and search my fwc bear and videos will pop up anything you need for reports just find us there you can also follow us on facebook instagram Snapchat, and a whole bunch of other social media sites. Well, thanks for joining us today, and I hope we're able to help you learn a little bit more about the Florida Black Bear.